In this video, we're going to explore how we can use the destroy API to change our chart here with different options here. You can see it will update the chart and re-render it again. Of course, this here is probably more practical if you would have different type of charts, then you will see very nicely how it will re-render again. But let's start to explore exactly what the destroy API does and then how we can use this nicely for our chart. In this video, we're going to answer one of the viewers question which is how to change chart with the destroy api in chart.js so this question came from one of my other videos about how to use the chart destroy api and render a new chart in chart.js so this is a very similar question basically and then in here a special thank you to elena domingos elena asked here the following hello thank you for your video so my code has a function with creating a chart and I need to destroy it when the data when the data has been changed. And after that create a new chart. I spent two days already and I can't find a solution. So eventually we had some uh, communication here and eventually this was a chunk of code that Elena gave. So we can start to look at this. And if I look at this here and as I indicated here somehow if i see here and of course i do not know the full item of it it looks like it wants to add up a new data point in here but of course i don't know so what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus on the destroy api although if i look at this i might say that maybe if you're only updating specific data you might reconsider using the update option anyway so what we're going to do is we're going to charge s3.com getting started and then here you might notice this error for some reason i get this error on my laptop but uh on my firefox it works fine and on my other laptop it works fine as well so what we're going to grab here is this chunk of code here i'm going to start working on i'm going to copy this code and if you want to understand what this code does please check out this specific video that explains it all so in here i'm going to paste this and once i paste this i will just cut out the title here put this title in there that is at least for me necessary for you of course not necessary save this then refresh and there we are so now we have a bar chart what i want to do now is i want to duplicate this and just put in a, another set of data and the reason i'm doing this is just to make uh, to make sure that when we destroy the chart and we're going to show the chart again i just want to show a different type of chart with some slightly different alterations so you can see the differences and you can see it works nice so we have here this what i will do is for this one i just remove the colors here so, uh, i just want to make sure we have this there we are this i will just copy this delete everything here and make this border solid one next one here is i will just copy this color here whatever this color is put it in there and paste it in here and make this one solid one all right so now we have this here weekly sales uh that's a weekly cost no idea i'm just making it up as i go so we have these differences and here i'll just put this nine six and here is six and this one will be 18. so we have a clear difference when we create the chart so what we want to do here based on your code if i understood it very carefully here is you want to render and i saw you have a lot of these items here and your issue was this uh once it works or the first time it works but the second changing of the data it says that the chart with uh, id must be destroyed all right so we're going to check on this because this here means you need to destroy the chart and it always loops through it it loops through it always however you don't need a new id name it's just the same ID name, but it's just a loop that in the document, basically it understands that this is a new chart version. And when I look at it here, I saw here the input. What I will do here, just simple with a button, because if I would do an input here, I would not understand exactly what value would I put in here, a number, a text, I do not know. So, or at least this is an input with key up. So I cannot say what it's, what would be here the function? So this is for me a question mark. Anyway, what I will do is then I will make a button and then I will show another sample where we can use like a uh, select option. So you have two options as well, so you have an understanding. Uh, all right, so what I have here is this. So I have these two datas here. I'm going to give this a data here, constant data. And then what I want to do here is I'm going to duplicate this. And let's put this in here. 
So this is constant data number two, remember this. And the reason is, if that is number two, this data here, remember this is a ES6 shorthand. All right, so what does that mean is that if the object and the constant equals same name, and then in that case, you can use what we did here, data comma. But now in this case, I'm going to change it because I want to refer now to the data number two. So I'm going to copy this here, just put it in there and say now, please go to data number two. And this config here is not anymore config because it will be config number two as well, because we have two, two times the same config. So I say config number two. This here is the render. The first one will be rendered. We leave it in here, we let it render. And the second one will be basically rendered by a button that we're going to create right now. So I'm going to create this button. And in this button here, I'll just say here on click. And we say here, re-render chart. Let's do it very simple and say render chart. Very simple, or maybe here render chart again. Render chart. So I'm going to copy this and then we put in here a function. And this function we call render chart and this render chart does basically two things in one. We can make like a separate button for destroy, but it's not necessary. And remember here, uh, we have this one here. This is basically the rendering item. And later on, we're going to use this again. So I need to use this here as a let because I'm going to use this exact same variable or constant value or let value. So I'm not allowed to use constant because a constant in JavaScript is not allowed to use twice. You can only declare it once. Very important. So a let is a dynamic value that we can change consistently. So what we're going to do is the following. I have here the render chart. And then I'll say here first my chart because that is the chart we want to adjust. And we say my chart, and then we say here destroy. So we're going to destroy this. So we're going to use here now the my chart API, or basically chart as API for destroy. So once we did this, if we save this now, you will notice here if I go here and press on this, it just destroys the chart. And then of course what happens if we keep on it will only say destroy, it doesn't render anything, so it doesn't recognize any changes. So what I need to do now, of course, is to put a rendering. To make it simple, I'm just going to grab this chunk of code and just put it in here. So copy this, put it in here, and then we have here indentation, remove this here. And now for the sake of it, this config will be now config number two, referring to this bar here. And this bar is, as you remember, we adjusted it to weekly cost and with different color and have different numbers. So we say here number two because that's the reference. Then if we save this and then refresh, now we say render, and now it becomes a nice orange button. So if I do this, you can see here it will keep on going, no problem at all. So this is very important here to understand. So now we have this one, and then let's do another one is where we have to select. So maybe we want to say, well, we want to select a certain item here. Well, we have to really consider how we're going to build that, but that's all right. What I want to do here is uh, select option, basically is select. Then here, I'm going to select this. We say this, we copy this, but now this is not anymore on click. It is on change. So we have here render chart. And then here, we're going to say here option. And this will be um, value equals blue. And, uh, oh, sorry, this is the orange or the cost. And we say here cost. So we have another one here, which would be the weekly sales. So we can just put that one in there. So we say, uh, we, not weekly, but sales. Put in here sales as well. So if I save this now, refresh, we have this here. And this, of course, right now it works. And the reason why it works now is because it just triggers the function here. But it is not what I would say intelligent. And the reason why is there's no way to figure out what did we select. So that's what we're going to do now. So I'm going to put in here, not an option. I'm going to comment this out and remove this on click. We don't need this. We say here the following here, render chart. And uh, we do here the render chart, I'll say this value. And maybe this might be a better solution for you as well. So we grab this, we have the value here, this, and then we have the on change render chart. All right, so we say here, I'll just say, say oh, what is that, the type, the type of chart, the ch type of option. And then we say here type, 
let me say dot value if I do this let me show you this console log and while doing this I already figured out I think why you have an issue because if I look at your code somehow it looks correct on certain points however I will explain it later on save this refresh what I want to do here first just to show you this before I even continue on uh, let's see here all right so it recognizes sales and on one it shows you cost beautiful so it recognized our selected value so what we can do here now is the following I'll just make it very simple we're going to say if statement and this if statement will say the following we'll analyze what are we selecting if we select equals and I don't know if equals strict will work here we can test that equals strict uh, equals cost in that case show this and then else basically we can destroy the chart here by default already we can already destroy it and here we just do the following we have this uh, let's see where is this curly braces make sure you have them in there oh sorry and there we are so we have this one first and another one is the else but I will just do another if exactly the same here and then we say if type dot value equals strict I'm not sure that will work I think it should be equals uh, with two we'll see sales in that case I'm going to copy this and I'll just put it here but of course sales is now conflict without any numbers cost was related to conflict with numbers so once we did this we will look through this and there we are so let's test this correctly well, let's do equal strict first save this here refresh so we have this here we do this we select sales that's correct and then we select here the yellow one the cost and then go back to sales beautiful all right so this is most likely uh, the way you have to do it in your case I see this here key up so in my personal opinion this should work unless you have something else behind the scene that I don't see so that could be I assume that this here your bar chart is always the same name here so it will be consistent all right and also the ID is also consistent here so the ID should not be changed here at all so this is very important so next what I assume is most likely this one the key up if you hold key up um, on, no, no no sorry it, it should be fine as well because it, I know it's if it's key down if you keep on pressing key down it might trigger a item and then it stops and maybe that was the issue I realized that that's not the case sorry so most likely not I would say check here exactly but also I'm really questioning this one why would you do this here maybe you're doing something because of a database that might be the reason in that case fine then that's all right but here what would you put in here the key up input I would say here or uh, maybe it's a button that you're using that could be as well however definitely check or try different options here try to do a select I do here is on change but if you don't like these kind of things we can do here like an add event listener put it in here that would work as well so but if my solution here so far doesn't work let me know exactly you can probably I need to know more what's happening behind the scenes on your chart